Welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. Today we are taking the unicorn sketch and trying our best to turn it into a full-fledged unicorn. A all grown up, fleshed out, decorated, embellished, personality glowing, all the things. If you hear anything in the background, it's probably my washer because I am so excited about being here in the studio today and having a lot of time, well, relatively a lot of time, to work on my unicorn and to let the creativity flow. And I've got so many ideas swirling around inside my head for what we're gonna do that I did not trust myself to stop and do any chores, stop and do anything. Like the only thing that I've put off before sitting down here inside the studio was walking Zoe. And it's just a little bit chilly, so I'm waiting for the temperature to rise before we do that. But I'm going to do it before I actually set the machine or set at the table to actually get creative. Just spending a few minutes talking to you guys, and then I'll go and walk her with Carter's if I have to put on a coat or something. But she needs to get walked. She doesn't get enough uh, activity anymore. Poor girl's just... She went from being fantastic to having lots of struggles. But so today, we're going to make sure she gets prioritized. Why am I excited? Not just because of the quilt. I just got finished watching the quilt show. Two wonderfully talented people on two different shows of the quilt shows, and they're not recent ones. Um, one of them, but I'll put both their names up because I can't remember one of them right now. Just Natalia is the last one I just watched, and she's doing really creative artwork, um, quilted and textural artwork that's quite spectacular and she's using repurposed single-use plastics like plastic bags and uh, creative things like I have I've been hoarding myself I've been hoarding this kind of stuff like what she's using and I keep it in my gift uh, wrapping containers I just have creative piles of things that I use and I know some people don't ever get gifts from me that are wrapped in some of those things because I know they wouldn't appreciate them. Um, so I have been impaired. I've not let the creativity flow when it comes to these things. And what am I talking about? Let me get you an example. A simple example that you say, well, of course, okay, some ribbon left over from a gift. That turned into a unicorn's horn that I now have, um, uh, that I now have put on here and I've put some other threading on top of it so it's not quite so obvious from that distance. I'll get a photo and so that you can see it on screen. But I've also been hoarding, does that look familiar? Dryer sheets. After they come out of the dryer, they're wonderfully pliable. There's no smell to them or anything like that. They've been washed and dried, right? Well, they've, they've been uh, dried. They haven't been washed, but they basically have um, been washed because all the clothing that you put in there with it was wet um, and all that moisture went through it. So how I might be able to use that, I didn't know, but I've been storing it, okay? And I'm not a hoarder on everything, but in order to be really creative sometimes, you've got to have tools, you got to have the supplies. So you have to keep things. you got to be organized about how you're keeping them or you are a hoarder, right? If you can't reuse it, if you can't find it, you can't reuse it. This other thing, look at that. I have been keeping stuff like this for a long time. Um, you know, that comes on your vegetables or whatever. This may make it into our unicorn today. So if you are freaked out by that, go ahead and scroll away. If you're creative and you're thinking, okay, let's see what she's doing, then hang tight because that's the kind of thing we're going to be exploring right after I get done walking Zoe. I'll see you in a second. This is just a little aside. I know this really has nothing to do with the unicorn quilt, but I think it might be interesting. I was just cleaning off my table before taking Zoe for a walk. Um, wanted to give the temperature just a chance to get another degree or two warmer. And I bought a smaller wool mat so I could try to create this scenario where I use it on a clipboard um, at my sewing machine so that I can put it in front of me. I like actually leaning it on the sewing machine um, so I can press smaller pieces open without having to get up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, as I've described before, I'm really not a fan of 
the U-shape scenario that we filters find ourselves in, uh, unless you're on a wheeled chair, which I don't have. But, you know, if you're leaning over to an ironing position and you're leaning into your sewing machine and then you're leaning over to a cutting place that, that and you're doing that repetitively all day long over hours, day after day or whatever, it's it's just wrecking your SI joints, your pelvis, it's just and your hips. It's just not healthy for your spine and it's not healthy for mine in particular. I know this. Um, I have a lot of problems in those areas and I don't need to make them worse. Because there's no no chance of me getting a fusion uh, again, unless it's life saving, um, and then it would be a temporary, and we'd have to go in and take out that hardware after my bones had fused. And it's like I got to do everything I can to stay off the operating table. And with weak connective tissue, that's hard. Okay, so number one, my first thoughts on this: this is a different brand than what I had the first time, and this is much more pliable than the first one I have. Maybe it's because the first one is bigger, um, but I don't remember it having this kind of give to it. Like that flexes easily. But the thing I wanted to point out was some notes on here. Now, a lot of this is clearly written in a different language and then translated not well, mind you, in most of it. But this was this part is fairly well stated, so I'm just gonna read it. Most modern irons use pressurized steam and since the wool mats are porous products, it's quite likely that steam will go through the mats. Makes sense. Hadn't thought about it like that, but I've seen evidence of that. When you iron on our wool mats, it's likely ironing, it's like ironing from both sides. So we recommend using a dry iron for best results. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I'd use a dry iron, but I do use my spray. Um, and it says a pressing mat has a slight smell of wool at the beginning, and there is no smell after using it twice that this taste will not be brought to the clothes. That's interesting use of words. And it says that some people are sensitive to the fragrance of wool. The mat is going to absorb moisture from the air even. So you want to it to not be on a surface that doesn't get, that is not also porous. Um, otherwise you're going to get mold and mildew built up. Like I have mine on a wood surface and that's fairly, and it's not, um, it's not a treated wood surface, so it's fairly porous. And so any moisture that builds up on the backside is going to uh, be able to be absorbed into that wood. Now, I'm not putting this, I'm not soaking this. And anytime that I do get moisture on it, I'm using hot iron. So that's helping it to evaporate. But those are just thoughts to consider. I had not. And also, because it's wool, it says, be sure to store it in a well-lit room or airtight container. Makes sense. Again, it is all wool, so we want to keep the pests out of it. And it says to use a wool setting or medium heat. I use high heat. But you know what? If I run it and I have to get another one, then I run it and get another one. Also, if it has a little burn marks on it, I'm not considering it ruined. My other one has a little burn mark from my small little bitty iron. And um, because it you can't keep that really. That's one of the reasons I don't use it so readily. It's harder to keep that plate of the little bitty iron elevated. All right, my friends, that's enough of, a, of an aside. Just wanted to mention that in case it's relevant to any of you. Now let's get back to the fun stuff. First, I gotta go walk Zoe. Be right back. I guess I should leave room for the quilt. I've got so much stuff. I almost don't have room to put the quilt down here. All right, I am not kidding. I plan on being outside of the box, letting my imagination just go for a little bit. I probably won't walk you through every thought that I'm having, but I do want to just sit here and play for a little bit and see what comes up out of it. And if there's anything in particular, anything significant, I will make mention of it. Let's get the quilt over here.
I will say um, one of the things that you know I've been concerned about is my original thought was that this would be something that um, my granddaughter would use on her bed and she would you know cover up her unicorns with it or you know put it on her shelf where she keeps her unicorns and so because of that I wanted to leave it uh, as something that could be washed uh, but there's another thought going on in my head that maybe it is something that we consider as decoration in her room and you know it's a piece of wall art in that case you know I've got other options like I can go ahead and use my feathers and um, they don't have to be outside of some casing and I mean that like I've considered this to go over my unicorn I don't like that but I did consider it and I may still use it in some other fashion uh, maybe on a horn or something I don't know this is fairly soft there's other things to this. there are other options this netting I use this at my mother's 80th birthday to decorate with and that's lovely um, and I could put the feathers down and put this over it and that would make the feathers doable you know um, for, for this being a used quilt for her to play with versus a wall quilt but if it's a wall quilt you know wall art then I might put it on top so it's hard to say I'm going to uh, bring you closer so you can see what I'm putting down here instead of seeing me all right so I think you can see better from there can you see what I'm talking about here I don't know how well this is going to pick up from that distance you're not very far away but you are at an angle if this was sewn on just to the body I could put all kinds of things underneath it and it would be durable you know I could put ribbon in there for part of the mane but again if it's an art quilt and it's just going to hang on the wall then these things could be on the outside of this and not necessarily underneath I don't like how they look like that one because it's meant to lay flat that's okay but then this one to be on top would be better. I don't know. I'm having this one wants to just like it's filling up. I don't know if you can tell, but it, it wants to lose its fuzz big time just handling it. So if it gets added, it gets added underneath something to contain all of its fuzz. Got to make a decision. Got to make a decision. Okay, I had some ribbon I was going to put on the eye. And then I thought about, see how transparent that is. It's a little too opaque. So this might be the right thing. This was a color catcher, by the way. It's got a little bit of some stain on it. I do kind of like, that's not enough of color though. That's just a, a transparent ribbon. Maybe I put a little bit of lace. I got this from the quilt show. It was a freebie, an enticement to bring people to their booths. Could definitely use that because that fills up that eye space nicely. I'd have to stitch it down, of course. Don't know how I feel about the eyelid being dotted. I do have some of this. Um, would this be chiffon? It's got some sparkle to it. That might be nice over the eye. Then it's like eyeshadow. May have to layer that. Put this back over that, see what that looks like. Now, I have no muscle memory, no prior experience to what I, to other things I've worked on. So I'm, you know, shooting in the wind. Is that a, a, a good expression? This looks pretty. It looks like it should belong on there somewhere. I don't know where that would go. I don't have a roll for that unless it's really rolled up tightly. 
and used then to outline the horn. And you have a little bit of a green, a little bit of metallic-y. That could work. That could work nicely, actually. Can you see that? I'm going to reserve that for the last because that could go on top of whatever else we're doing. So I'm going to hold off on that. There's this lovely thing, like a ribbon. Eyelid could be green. Could have green eyeshadow. Don't like that. Got pink. A little bit of pink can go in the hair. What I'm thinking is that I lay these artif you know, artifacts, lay these things, ribbon and feathers and lace down in a drapey fashion and then lay this or something over it and then come in and stitch the mane on top of that so that the stitching is holding it down and creating that look of feathers, I mean, a mane of uh, hair from a horse's mane or unicorn's mane. But there's no going back. Once I do that, I am committed. Ay, 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 ay. So before I do the anything with the hair, let me think about what our face needs. And in, oh, this would look lovely in the in that mane too, right? Or maybe it goes around the outside edge. Or just a little bit of, of it down near the bottom. I do like that. That's pretty because it would drape nicely, right? To get that to drape nicely inside the netting and then sew it. I like how it drapes and how you can wind it around. Okay. Um, other ribbons, other kinds of ribbon. Do have a little bit of gold. I've got some, um, oh gosh, what do you call this? can't think of what it's called. There's embroidery floss, really thick thread. I can't think of what it's called right now. And also, I've got leftover little pieces from our template that I could put in. Again, that's only if we don't expect this. If this turns into a wall piece, then this is what we would do. I do like those pieces a lot. They look good on there. They'd really pop through that too. So again, this would not cover the whole quilt. This would just cover the head, ear, mane, and the neck. And just like the flannel is gonna be cut off around the perimeter, this would be too. Now the other thing, just to really freak you guys out, because I was watching the quilt show, like I mentioned earlier, and Natalia was reusing plastic bags let me go get those. I forgot to bring those in here. So this is a bag from my quilt store. How fitting would that be? See how transparent that is. See, that might be nice for the eye. I love things just being all cotton too and doing it all with just thread. I don't think my granddaughter would mind if it is just something that goes on her wall. I think she would love it because um, she's moved to a new home, has a new bed bedroom. I think, she, you know, even though she's just barely five, I think she would appreciate having unicorn decorations for her room. Also thought about couching in some thick yarn. I have some others. Maybe the thick yarn goes around the unicorn horn. It's variegated, so you'd get a um, variegated border to the unicorn horn. That's okay. Right. 
if we put too much texture over here and too many colors over here in the main, it could be really confusing to the eye, just really distracting. When I went to that quilt store yesterday that I mentioned in yesterday's, this well, today's video, which is for you guys, it'll be yesterday's video. I should have picked up some pens I saw because they were just like these. They're the magic pens in the same diameter here, but they're tinier. And it would have been perfect for some of this work that I'm doing right now. Just something really short. I believe I bought this ribbon as one of her birthday celebrations, decorations at one of her birthday celebrations. A, a unicorn's mane is supposed to be unique. You know, it's supposed to be in all the pictures that people make it very flamboyant. And I'm all about that. I think unicorns are very flamboyant and we need to not hamper the, that. I wonder if we have that on the eye and then that over it. There's a part of me that thinks that if I get too elaborate with thinking outside of the box, I could really turn this into a quilt that's going to take me another month to finish. See, I've got these little petals from the little silk petals from a uh, flower arrangement that somebody gave me with a birthday gift. And I uh, thought this would be a nice use of them. Okay. Let me cut out some of this and put over that eye. I do like that. It could get tricky. Doesn't need to cover the um, sketching of the eye. I think we need to see that. The eyeliner of the eye. Gotta make sure I don't enclose any pins if I put a netting over this. So help me to uh, not do that. Y'all like my screen, okay? I like that. It's just a little subdued. I almost feel like I need to tack that down with stitches so I can take those pins up before I do whatever else I'm going to do. So if we do that, then while I'm at the machine, I want to think about other main features. This is this the mouth. This part should be black. I might just do that with shading, with, with stitches. This is, I guess, that's the nose. I'm sorry, did I say mouth? That's the nose, this is the mouth. So I wonder if I should put some uh, red in there or black, probably just black. It just needs to be defined. It doesn't need to be, um, doesn't need to pop inside of all these other colors. It would be hard to compete with that anyway. So I think, yeah, let me just start with this. Let me get this eye down. I'm going to use, should I use white or invisible thread? I'm going to use white. Let me see what that looks like. I've got gray thread in the machine already. So I'm going to take it and use it for this area right here. What I believe that little part is just like the under eye, like the under, the darkness that is around a human or an animal's eye. So I want it to have some texture to it. Uh, I'm sorry, not texture. I want it to have some depth to it. So I'm going to do that. So I've added something to the complexity of my situation. I have added this little thingy here. So I can... I love that. It's awesome. But it changes up how I engage with my table and the, my machine. So it's another learning curve for me. Hopefully it's one that doesn't stump me. So yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Since I've got the gray thread in there, I'm going to use it and do that one area 
before I do anything else. I have officially gotten to the point that I have so much thread that I need to figure out how to organize it. I have a variety of them. Okay, go up. Oh wait, it doesn't stay up. Oh, is it just a temporary thing? Oh, I thought it like made it stay. That's interesting. Oh wait, I need my darning foot. Yeah, I gotta spend some time. I gotta find the manual. Um, I gotta go online and find the manual. Hopefully there's a bigger, better manual than what came with the machine. I'm thinking I've gotten it far enough. I think what I'm going to do is, because I don't want to like thread paint the entire thing, but I'm going to go around the perimeter so that it's it's whitest, whitest at um, top, no, all the way around it. Going to do it in kind of a shading method, though. I think so. I need to start right there, I think. Okay. Well, that's on top of the needle. Let's don't do that. Actually, why don't I just take that needle up? It's done its job. Did that just pull up? Yes, I think it pulled up my bobbin. I think, I'm not sure. That was my intent, so I don't have my bobbin hanging out in the bobbin thread, getting knotted up. Okay, all right. Let's see what we can do. Super low, super slow. Let's go. I might need to go faster than that. Oh, well, hang on. I need like a 2.0. That's a little bit too actually long. A 2.5 or a 3 might be good. Like a mixture actually might be good. Okay, it's set to a 3.5. And I'm going to increase my speed a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. I just took off to doing the eye when I told you I was going to be doing under the eye. Oh, wait. I gotta take the feed dogs off. Basically, just want to make this kind of curved. I want the eye to see that this is curved under the eye. Yeah, I think I like that. I think it did good. I want to create a little bit more definition right up against the eyeliner, which is not really what that is, but the shading would be heaviest right up against the rim of the eye. I think there's something I need to learn yet about using this foot because it's kind of jerky. I don't know if it's because I'm going so slow or what. Okay, I'm gonna go down to small stitches and speed up so I can get, I'm gonna go try to go back and forth right up against the outside edges here. See what happens. That's not bad. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my white thread. I'll probably have to come back to this, but I want to see it. Okay, that, right? Yes. Changing threads. Changing. Oh, I thought I brought my scissors over here.
Why is that giving me so much resistance? I do have it pretty, have that tension pretty dialed down. It's a much thicker thread. All right, you hang out right there. Needle is up. Amazing. Love that. All right. Let's see if we can't make us an unicorn eyelid. No pressure whatsoever. I think I need some kind of really, I know this is slick, but I think it could be slicker for this maneuvering around, if there was something really super slippery, it would be great. Okay, it's not, is it because the needle's not down? This is not, my darning foot is not down. Why is it not down? Did I do something wrong? There, it's engaged now, okay. All right, I'm at 1.8. I'm gonna stick with that for the moment. Hang on. Just gonna go around this exterior perimeter. Knock down that, oh my gosh, what do you call those things, the dryer sheet? Okay. That's secured. Now let's make it look like it has an aesthetic purpose and not just a functional purpose, meaning the stitches. Okay, we're gonna increase. We were at a 1.8, we're going up to four. Let's see what happens with a four. I'm getting a better grip. One more needle in there I want to take out. It was barely hanging on. But don't want to break a needle and mess up this machine. Great. I do need gloves. I'm wearing out my hands and shoulders and neck, trying to grip it and move it. Okay, that's a lot of fun. I'm gonna get you closer. All right, I've made two um, changes. I've put on one glove, just because it's the one I reached first. I put on the right one, but I feel like I should put on the left one. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if I can, because this is not like, it's not like this is super heavy. There's not a lot of extra drag on it, but a little bit of extra grip will help loosen up my joints, I think. Um, and then I moved the, the light so that it's less in the way, but um, still a helpful tool for us. And I hope that is helping. I can see how it's going to get in my way too. So we'll see. It may have to go back to where it was. All right. Um, just kind of noticing that since the glove is not fitting to my hand super well, that's not helpful. Like it would help here because that's securing, that's fitting my fingers and not moving around on my fingers. But this moving too, like this should have been stronger so that that stays on the hand better. Personal opinion. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more here. Just a little bit more. Looks like it's stuck on something there. I don't know what that could be. 
I did change the tension. I feel like my feed dogs are up instead of down. I need to check those. Okay, I need to get my um, scissors to these threads. See how I shaded here? And of course, I'm gonna come back around and outline that again. But I have a little bit of white here on an eyeball. I might bring this down some. I need to think about that. So yeah, I was doing all that with the feed dogs engaged, which means that when I was sewing the blockhead the other day, I was doing it with the feed dogs not fully engaged. That's actually kind of encouraging. That means it's going to function better. Yeah, I think it could use some more curving here. So I may put in a little bit more extra thread there. And it needs to go have a sharper curve. It's not an eyeball, it is an eyelid. I need to keep on reminding myself of that. Yeah, I want to put, make that just a little bit more dense right through there to help accentuate that curve and maybe um, right along this edge down here, it needs to be a little bit more densely congested. Don't know if I need any that goes, that, that goes through the field. I've got a snag on my nail. Um, and if I did, what? motion would it need a down a straight across and up kind of feel like it needs to be like feathered in from here and not go all the way across so i'm going to start with going more dense there and then feather very lightly just a few that go through here And then maybe some little short ones that kind of come out from this congestion here of threads and just kind of point in that direction. So it implies a, um, a continuous surface. Okay, this should all go much nicer. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I'm still gonna put this glove on, but I just do think it needs to be the other one. I've seen the quilt show um, where they sell uh, like a pad. So it's not a full glove. I think I would like that. I don't like how much movement there is in this. Okay, so. I know my objective. Let's see what I can do. I'm at a four. I'm going to go to a five and see what I can do with that. I made one small mistake. And I need to cover it up because I don't want to cut it. So it's not going to look like I was anticipating it looking because I'm trying to cover up a mistake I made. Trying to make that mistake look intentional. Cut. Now we left. Again, I gotta cut my threads. Does that look like 
it's an eyeball without an iris or does it look like it's a um, lid? I think I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to work on this little mouth down here. I put a little piece of ribbon that I'm going to cover with black thread and see how that looks. Because I think if um, that's kind of what you get, like you've got black gums and stuff on a horse, I think. Of course, it's a unicorn. It can have green gums if we want it to have it. But um, but there would always be like a little hint of flesh color sometimes. So if I cover that up mostly with black and there's a little bit of, you know, fuchsia poking through, then okay. So black thread goes on and then we figure out what we're going to do with the ears. Get a game plan for if this is a wall quilt or if this is a usable washable thing. I may not have black thread. I do, I do. It says thread from the 90s. What is this? It's sulky nylon. 59% nylon and 40% polyester and 1% metallic. Interesting. See how nicely that flops up? I feel like this should come up easier than it does. Is it because I've got stuff in here? And also, does anybody know on this foot, which is, what foot is this? Is this my J foot? Oh wait, how do I know unless I do this? Yes, that's my J foot. And I've got a little bit of plastic right there and that's where I've been lining up my stitch line. Okay, so why does it have that tension button right there? I don't, I don't know what that does. W what does that do? I don't have time to look it up right now. So if any of y'all want to help me out, help me on my learning curve, I'd greatly appreciate it. J, back where it belongs. But it actually like latches closed where this one just sits closed. So you don't have any resistance. I feel like I'm breaking this one every time I touch it. Should I turn off the machine to pull that out? Wonder if it will have less resistance then. Nope. You don't have much thread to get a grip. I feel like this is not healthy for my needle. Trying to pull down so that needle is not getting pulled to the side. Black. Well, I've got this black thread in use. I'll probably go around that eyeball a little bit too. And try to do the nostril inside the nostril might be handy if I take a look at some more pictures of unicorns okay it's got to go that way Okay, I'm going to try to get my bobbin thread up. Surely it works the same as any other machine. Okay, I'm going to go to a really low stitch length just for pinning it in place. Okay, down needle, up needle. 
wouldn't that have caught my how do you do that you all laughing at me yet is this a, like a no-brainer thing that i'm making hard surely the bobbin thread should come up when you do that Ah, there it is. I held on to my top thread and it came out. Okay, I feel better about that. That's gonna help a lot. Okay, we're doing little bitty tiny stitches just to go over that arc and I'll pull out, be careful over my pen, then I'll pull that out and I'll give some thought to what my top stitches should look like. I'm on a 1.4, it's got a 1.2. I'm going to do that. Why not? Let's just see what a 1.2 looks like. I'm going to slow down though. Because I don't have my feed dogs. I'm going to actually care about this. I pulled up my foot and pulling the pin out. I got to be careful not to move anything. Feed dogs are not in place. So does it really matter what my stitch length is? I cannot get used to the fact that my knee, my leg is over here helping matters. Okay. I'm gonna increase my stitch length again. I'm at a four. I'm going to see about that and go slowly. Increase my speed and my stitch length. I'm going to do a 5.0 and I don't know how to tell you what, what my speed is. It's closing in on the two arrows. There's a one arrow, two arrows, and three arrows. I don't know what my variability is on that. I haven't looked at what wide open looks like. Yeah, I'm going to go from the mouth into the nostril. You can really see that this is a metallic thread. Like, it's pretty shiny, surprisingly, because you don't really get that by looking at the spool. Okay, I feel like I just saw a bunch of thread. Yeah, that thread doesn't like this needle evidently or something because it's bunching up above the eye. It might just be because the thread is so old. That's interesting. It was making a noise, so I thought I should slow down. Let me get my scissors. My friends, I'm going to leave you at this point with these two video clips teasing where I actually got to before I ended the day. This video has gotten to 49 minutes, so it's time to call it quits and for me to get in bed. Tomorrow, I will work some more and I will release another video for you to see on Friday to see the next stage in the unicorn's evolution. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for your tolerance of all of the learning curves with the sewing machine and with this new technique. It's been fun uh, being open and vulnerable with you and it's been very, very sweet and all the sweet messages I've gotten from you guys has been um, reassuring and I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye.